friends, we have discussed a satellite image and photogrammetry and interfacing that is GIS and a GPS. These are high altitude and it covers a larger area, hundreds of thousands square kilometer it covers. Now, we are concerned with a small construction area. Then, this technology, drone technology is much more in because of its resolution capacity close to the ground and a smaller area we cover and much more details we can provide. What exactly is the drone technology, how best we can explore this technology for our engineering activities, we shall try to learn in brief about the drone technology now. What is a drone technology? It is an unmanned, no person is sitting in the device, like satellite image, aerial photography and everything is automatic here also. An unmanned aerial vehicle, also known as a drone technology, is used to use for different applications in a civil engineering. Drone acts as a tool that increases communication between construction participants. There is some construction, a dam, tunnel, etc. Something is going on and it communicates between them and the office, improves site safety. It helps in topographic measurements of large area, not that large as the aerial photography or satellite image, it can provide, it become costly, but, but with reference to the construction area building, to create buildings, aerial surveying, bridges, roads, highway, these are the actual construction activity sites where drone technology finds a wide application, where we need to have a, the topographic measurements of a large area. So, in such projects where drone technology finds much applications in civil engineering. In mapping, drones can be used by sophisticated large scale maps. Small scale portable drones are also available now. Therefore, depending upon our purpose application, we have the different even portable drones are also available. Therefore, drone technology finds wide application because of its flexibility, the cost and the kind of resolution details, etc. Now, what is a drone? It, they carry lightweight digital camera that can capture good quality images of the ground. We have digital camera captures the ground information. No. This camera can be set to take pictures at a regular interval as in the flight plan. I can control the exposure interval at every one minute, every three second or whatever. I have to take photograph. Here also, I can program it as to take the photograph at a regular interval. And it is a digital memory stored in a chip and it is helpful. After a landing, the pictures can be knit into, we have the chip, this digital memory is a chip and these are recorded in a chip and that we take it out and knit into geo-rectified ortho mosaic and then make use of this is similar to that aerial photography and can be, this is geometrically corrected, it can be geo-referenced, geo-rectified, whatever we call to a uniform scale. Aerial photography, we have seen it is terrain dependent. Terrain varies, scale varies. Here, this we can adjust to uniform scale and to a common geographical coordinate system. And different photographs can be tied together, knit together. Yes, we can get the image or picture of a large area as similar to that of a satellite image. Lightweight GPS 
it is GPS mounted, GPS connected simultaneously also get the lat long of that particular area. Whereas in satellite image, we need to have the GPS to interface. A lightweight GPS units enable drone to make spatially accurate maps is the advantage of the drone. Now, unmanned aerial vehicle can produce a number of different types of maps so, geographically accurate, orthorectified, means so, georectified image directly we get, whereas in satellite we have to georectify, georeferencing, people use different terms. So, two-dimensional maps we can get from the drone technology and useful in elevation model, thermal maps, 3D map model two-dimensional maps are the most commonly created products of UAV. These are all possible to generate. The simplest way to create a mosaic from aerial imagery is using photo stitching software. There we have a 60% overlap, 20% overlap, etc. The central point or principal point of the photograph help us and the overlap based on that overlap position, we can generate the image of the ground or map of the ground. Here we are use the software to stitch different photographs and the software comes with a different type of drone we have. It can combine series of overlapping aerial photographs into a single image. Here also we have the principle is similar to that of aerial photography. Here also we have the overlap. So it can stitch into and we can generate. Advantage is drone photogrammetry requires very little labor apart from flying the drone and capturing image. Ground we do not have much and only capturing yes unmanned it captures once you program it and make it to collect the information. So, not much uh, uh, labor is involved in it. Drone make it easy to capture data in areas that are hard to reach. I am here, the other side I want, the in between the lake is there, forest is there, volcano is there or something is there, inaccessible area, yes it can capture the data in areas that are hard to reach or unsafe for surveying. So, example may include places with heavy volcanic activity, crime or warfare where I, I am afraid to go there, there is some criminal activity there, I want to survey like that kind of. Then personally going there become difficult. So, difficult to navigate especially high waves are coming, floods are there, risk high velocity. Uh, in the river mouth condition because of a current, these are all the area where actual survey is difficult. In such cases, I can generate the information from the drone technology and make use. Even the adverse weather condition, these are the situations which compels us to make use of a drone technology in generation of maps and gather information. This make the photography useful in setting where quick land survey is necessary. So, taking survey may involve a lot of time by actual ground 10 days. In one day we can complete the survey, the second day process the software and give the output. So, drone create highly accurate images. In case of aerial photography, we have certain limitation as you go high, high, high and there is a, uh, uh, there is a, um, displacement, relief displacement, etc. problems are there. So, such things are minimum. Do not create highly accurate images, making them a reliable source of data for our application. But there are certain limitations of course. Now, what are that? Drone can transfer us into authorized area. I want to collect the information here. By mistake, it may 
we have heard in the newspaper that the some drone from pakistan crossed the border and sometimes they may have purposely or we don't know but they say uh, by mistake even our drone also went into their area happened therefore we do not have often it may cross to authorized area such as airport where we are not permitted so military zone where photography is banned but drone do go there and capture that is one limitation not in our control exactly well convenient surveillance is an advantageous use of drone it can become disadvantage with a severe consequence of drone by third party anybody can into our area we can launch and that may cross the area therefore anybody can use and they may capture our information we can capture somebody's information this is unethical some of these things do happen because of drone technology the central control system of the drone can be attacked by or hacked that control system is i am capturing the data from the air from that but my control system is in the ground somebody can damage my entire data system it can also be hacked by somebody therefore the information which i have difficult to have control on that means it can be leaked etc there's a risk of harm to surrounding infrastructure and people when drones are used for mapping purposes so this is often problem so drone hits drone get damaged or uh, high rise building etc they accident all this either drone or the infrastructure get affected the drone is another it works on the principle similar to that of aerial photogrammetry but a low altitude data gathering devices and much accurate and relatively cheaper yes that is one area emerging we can make use of all it is already into little costly drone but we can buy that one and make use of in all construction project a larger project these are being used Uh, at a reasonable cost another technology is a ground penetrating radar this is another geo tool available with us what is that gpr is a geophysical locating method that uses radio waves to capture images below the surface of the ground we have used electrical resistivity seismic refraction method bore holes to understand but those are not adequate sometimes this is inevitable because seismic refraction method within 100 meter depth is not reliable not that accurate as the depth increases kilometer 1000 meter or more seismic refraction method is useful similarly electrical resistivity method has so many when the rock is wet rock contains a mineral different a rock say quartzite do not contain any water or it contain water it has a different signature instead of water if it may contain certain amount of metals can they give different than resistivity resistivity meter alone often is not dependable me with minerals with water if they can give rise to similar and the value we get resistivity way in the range therefore exact finding out the object often constrained by electrical resistivity whereas gpr facilitates that advantage of gpr is that it allows to pinpoint the location of the underground utilities without a disturbing for example say 10 meter 2 meter 3 meter some cables are laid or pipelines are laid no i do not know where the underground pipelines are there what is there a network distribution i have to have some activity i may disturb those lines possibility or i for my building i have a building up to few meter depth i must have investigated the ground 
soil type etc have been stated. But if there is some defects up to some 20 meter depth, if I have some problem, I will not able to because this surface condition, I have soil investigations I have done. If there is any cave-like features below the ground, I will not be able to detect. But with the help of a GPR, I am able to locate that. Thus, some subsurface cavities, cave-like, some weakness, metals, cables, anything, all those possible to locate them. The principle of GPR is similar to that of seismology. What is that? We send signals to the ground, it hits the layer or a rock or a material, gets reflected, get refracted, both. Then similar to that. So the main difference is that ground printing radar uses electromagnetic energy rather than acoustic energy. In the seismic, we create artificial shocks, that is acoustic energy we release that travels, hits the layer, get reflected back or refracted and reflected, etc. Whereas here we use electromagnetic energy, that is the one difference, instead of seismic waves to detect subsurface structure. The ground itself can limit. There, beyond 100 meter depth, seismic activity, seismic refraction become reliable, but here up to 30 meter depth satisfactorily we can generate data. The difference is there it is more accurate with the depth, seismic refraction or reflection. Here as the depth increases, its efficiency, reliability decreases. Up to 30 meter depth, it is more reliable. Up to 30 meter depth, those are not reliable. Now we have the opportunity to investigate like this. Therefore, in such situation, GPR comes to our help. What is the principle? Just now said, we have, it is similar to seismic method. It uses energy waves in the microwave band, ranging in frequency from 1 to 100 megahertz, 1000 megahertz. It uses that energy, microwave band energy. GPR works by emitting pulse into the ground. It sends and that gets reflected and recording the echoes, the reflected that result from subsurface object under below we may have a rock body, we may have iron, metal or concrete, some structure, some that it may hit and get reflected. That is recorded. Therefore, up to 30 meter depth, if we are interested, anything we can. GPR imaging device also detect variation in the composition. If we have different composition of the material with the depth, yes, it is able to. It requires two main pieces of component. What are those? A transmitter and a receiver. A transmitter and a receiver. Here we send, transmit and here we receive that. These are and receiving antenna. The transmitter sends the electromagnetic signals into the soil or the ground. If the electromagnetic impulse hits an object, the density of the object reflects or refracts and scatters the signal depends on the nature of the material. The receiver detects that written signal and record the variation. And based on this, we are able to understand what is the object below at certain depth, at a desired depth. So GPS system has a software. As we have satellite image processing software, we have drone software, we have even GPR also we have a software that translate these signals into images of the object. And then based on those, we can understand what this subject is, what the object is, material is. This is how it is used to map structures, utilities buried underground like cables, whatever, 
old buried tanks we can whatever we have all those things we can plastic something buried anything we can using gpr technique we can detect those whether it is a man made or a natural gpr signals can be used to find wide range of items material like concrete metal plastic natural material like pvc anything of that it is possible to identify this is a subsurface tool most effective when it is there is a large difference between the electromagnetic property of the target and the surrounding example i have a target material and this is the surrounding if there is a significant difference between this and this in terms of their electromagnetic signals or property then it is very easy to identify what the object is it means if i do not have any difference between this material and this difficult to resolve the gpr is often used to map items made of the following especially in the construction site these are all we excavate we cannot go beyond few meter depth very old site etc in such cases it is a helpful yes the possible application of gpr is virtually everywhere is frequently used used to detect the materials buried underground underground utility lines pipelines changes in ground strata if we have different rock layers or soil layers with a depth and i have to have a multi story building some 20 story like that i may have to understand the ground even up to 20 30 meter depth i can depend on this geological features and rock obstruction especially within 30 meter depth in a city like bangalore if there is any pockets of water or underground some other so then or whether there is a fractured layer i have to have an artificial recharge this is a soil layer below that there is a rock are these rocks are fractured or massive etc i want to understand i depend on gpr so air pockets or voids or cave like structure if you present subsurface i depend on gpr excavated and backfilled areas we know this is a natural ground and here it may be excavated and refilled and how do i distinguish this then in such cases also especially the old constructed sites etc this become difficult then in such cases we go for gpr based on gps signal we are yes a ground water table in bedrock mapping in all this area gpr is effectively used yes advantage of gpr is a number of advantages gpr is extremely cost effective and a non invasive way of surveying so drone can trespass into neighbors area cross the neighbor area i do not have control like that it can be hacked it can be damaged there are so many limitation with the drone whereas that kind of problem is not here it means i have control on the data collection process it is extremely cost effective and a non invasive way of surveying i not encroaching somebody's land it provides invaluable information before workers even break the ground or start excavation before we start the work we have the ground condition understood we can give yes here there is a at 5 meter depth you have this take care like that <coughs> especially in a landslide prone area hill side road side we can provide as so information to the workers before they start their excavation it is safe for use in public spaces and wide variety of projects like even city like bangalore i can have if little over little 
open space if I have, I can. I cannot lay a geophysical survey like seismic or electrical resistivity method, etc. I have a problem, but I can use a GPR. Ground penetrating radar has that advantage, whereas a drone I cannot make use. In such cases, other methods of geophysical technique like resistivity, seismic is not possible. Yes, GPR I can rely upon. It detects metal and non-metal objects as well, as well as wires underground, irregularities, etc. It make it possible to measure the dimension, depth, and thickness of the target. It is not just that alone. I am able to measure what is the thickness, what is the dimension, depth of the object I have. It is not just qualitative that I have a cavity here, I have a material error. Quantitatively, I am able to say. Data is provided quickly and can cover large site area. I need not wait for satellite image. Is months together satellite has to pass and that data has to be obtained by uh, the agency. They have to generate a CD for a electromagnetic uh, like then magnetic tape like and they have to supply. I have to generate process. It's all a long period. Satellite or uh, aerial photography is also taking. But GPR immediately next day its data is available or the very next hour the data can be made available if the survey is done. It is as good as real time. Means uh, I survey and give the input to uh, and uh, my data output to the user agency. So only one side of the surface need to be scanned to provide a data. That is another advantage. Elsewhere it is not happened. So, one side of the surface need to be scanned to only one side I have, I need not study this from the other side, etc. Frequencies can be regulated to deliver a range of resolution and penetration. 5 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter I can and spatial resolution I can, all that I have control. Data collected during the survey can be seen immediately or used in later project. In the very next one hour, I am ready with my data and interpretation. I can uh, guide the workers in the field or I can store this and any day I can use. No digging, no excavation or ground disturbance is necessary. Whereas seismic, I have to dig a ground, create a shock, it sends the energy. Like I have a geophone, n number of ground should be free. Like that, that kind of limitation is not there in case of GPR. So no excavation, just send the signals and captures and received. So landscaping, structure, lawns, etc. are be left undisturbed. If you have any land like that, I need not change the land, I need not excavate. We have the lawns, we have a pond or anything. No disturbance, absolutely, I can make use. It's a less expensive than other methods of investigation. Therefore, GPR nowadays finds wide application from small project to the any big project. And it is a cost effective. Friends, we have discussed in several modules module 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, different aspects of earth resources engineering. In the module 1, we have discussed earth's internal forces, earthquake, volcano, landslides, etc. These are all internal forces, the kind of hazards they create and how to manage including plate tectonics are the result of Earth's internal forces. So internal structure and their composition, dynamic forces, all they provide some kind of input for us to understand which part of the Earth we are dealing. Is it sensitive to earthquake, volcano, etc. So based on that, we are able to decide upon how safe our area. Accordingly, we are able to say seismic zonation 3, 4, 5 means the 
sensitivity of the area. Accordingly, we can also take precaution in our design. Thus, in the first module, we have tried to understand as internal forces, the hazards associated and precaution to be taken in our project and how exactly we can take precaution and safe or provide safety to the structure, population, etc. Society, thus we have to help. That is all we have discussed in the first module. In the second module, we have discussed the rocks, the minerals, these are all different resources of the earth, including water, the land from all these are resources of the earth. How to identify these resources, how to classify, how based on their physical properties or other properties, we can explore their properties to serve the mankind. That is based on the physical properties, we find suitable application and make use of them in specific industries and add value to it. Thus, we make our engineering activities more cost effective and efficiently we use and for specific purposes, specific object, ultimately how best we deliver our service to society through use of these natural resources, that is rocks and minerals, etc. That we have discussed in our second module. In the third module, we have discussed surface process and forces. Process like weathering, disintegration, decomposition of the rock is a kind of process due to forces that operate from the Atmosphere, carbon dioxide, their oxygen, their water, their temperature, their, these are all a kind of forces that act on the surface rocks, surface. This is a weathering, this is one. How to prevent our structure from weathering effect or what kind of material I have to select depends on the, depending on the local weathering condition. So, weather resistant structure I have to select for architecture purpose, etc. At the same time, there are natural process, the same water which is responsible for weathering, that accumulated water can flow as a river, carry the weathered materials, they transport, they deposit and erode. This is a river. How? During this process, they develop a wide valley, narrow valley, somewhere they deposit, somewhere they create meanders. Where they deposit, they may build deltas like all these, the process of the earth, how exactly they are responsible for a different process that is weathering, transportation, etc. And they result in different kind of surface landforms like valleys, wide valley, narrow valley, hills, plains, etc. Now depending on this, how engineering is, example, in a narrow valley, we prefer construction of a gravity dam. In a wide valley, we prefer earthen dam in a condition where the abutment rocks are strong, whereas bedrocks or foundation site rocks are weak. We go for arch dam like or wherever we may prefer the tunnels across the hills, etc. Where is or how, depending on the topography, our engineering activities vary. These are all controlled depending on the local condition, that is weathering as well as the, the land form, result of earth process, how best we can make use of this natural process to provide services to society, engineering. At the same time, we are also able to take precaution about the structure we construct from the weathering, the erosion process, etc., the dam, floods, or how best we can recharge water resources into underground, able to artificial recharge like structure, how best the drainage characteristic we can engineer them wherever we have the dendritic pattern, we go for 
flooding method, wherever we have rectangular, we go for Nala Ban method. These are all different methods of recharge. All those we have discussed in the third module. In the fourth module, we learn to survey the site, both surface observation, often that is outcrop. When surface observation is not adequate, we are also going for deeper based on the borehole technique. We have went there. Often borehole technique is inadequate. We have also used electrical resistivity method not only to understand subsurface condition, also to locate water or other resources. Seismic refraction method, we also learned how best we can understand the subsurface. The, with the combination of this, how we are able to understand if there is any weakness or faults in the ground, curved or folded rocks in the ground, unconformity in the ground, joints, cracks, etc. And which are the suitable area with respect to the folded beds, inclined beds for construction of a dam, etc. We have discussed it. Similarly, which part of the raw ground, what kind of weakness, if we have some weakness, how to improve the ground condition. For example, jointed rocks, what is the ground improvement technique, grouting technique, rock bolting, some of these issues. And if beds are folded, which part of the tunnel is ideal for this kind of tunnel, different types of tunnel, uh, types of dam, etc., reservoir site, how to investigate, what precaution we have to take in a reservoir site, how it is different from a dam site, all those with respect to our subsurface, surface observations we have learned to understand the engineering of these. In the last module, we have learned that whatever the surface observation often become inadequate, especially when our construction site is only some area, whereas hundreds of kilometers away something may happen like earthquake that may affect our area. Sometimes my area is only one hectare. Beyond few kilometers from my site, there may be some activities going on that may affect my area. Therefore, my area I have to study with respect to that. How safe my area is. Therefore, often we have to survey beyond our construction site. Depending on the site size, I may use a satellite image or aerial photographs or drone or GPR. And what are the principles behind this? How best I make use of this principle and explore it to understand our site condition. And depending on the site condition, my cost, which is the ideal method, whether the GPR or other drone technology, aerial photogrammetry or satellite image and how to interface this. If I have data of a different kind, ground observed, I have a satellite observed, I have to interface them and that the software which help us to process it, model it, visualize it, store it and present it. That is a GIS for interfacing GPS. What is the uh, principle behind the GPS, what are the limitations and what are the possible area of its application we have learnt. Therefore, now with this we are able to widen our technology base. The geo tools we can employ and widen, efficiently use them in our construction and thus able to provide the best services to the society. Ultimately, we become the good engineers to provide our services, best services to the society. Friends, all these we have discussed in one to five module. Friends, during presentation, I have presented some of my case studies, our own observation. 
some of you have not seen some of the coastal belt perhaps or Kitturkanapur perhaps or some area which I could, you may not have visited, you may not have idea. Friends, all these I have presented, our objective of classroom teaching is make you to understand the subject. And once you understand the subject, you start thinking. Our aim is to make you to think and therefore we first make you to understand and provide the required tools and knowledge and make you to think. That is the objective of classroom teaching. But for purpose of passing the examination, refer our notes. There I have provided some additional problems as well because for presentation only one or two types of problem we have tried here. But different types of problems may come in the examination and some of these I have presented in my notes you may refer. Finally, to conclude, classroom teaching is to learn and understand notes to pass an examination. Friends, thank you. Good luck.